So we started a new chapter today, which is about anomalous dimensions in Landau theory. So previously showed that the Landau theory fails within the critical regime, where this little t approaches zero, especially when dimension is less than upper critical dimension four. And this chapter, we ask a very naive question. So can we improve this Landau theory, especially the Gaussian approximated Landau free energy functional by perturbation theory. So whether we could improve this Landau theory by including, say for example, this quartic term, this five to the power of four in this Gaussian form, and then we could do perturbation in terms of this quartic term. And in principle, we are able to do so. But in this chapter, we'll see that the perturbation theory fails for dimension is less than four, precisely the same reason that we found earlier regarding the critical region where this Ginsburg criterion is violated. So in other words, any attempt uh, to improve this Gaussian Landau theory should fail. So it looks like this is a dead end, but we learned something by a dimensional analysis of this so-called the Ginsburg-Landau 5-4 theory, where we include this quartic term in the, the Gaussian theory of a Landau framework. And in order to do perturbation, uh, we need to perform dimensional analysis on this all different coupling constants and so on, and see as this temperature close to the critical temperature. And we will show later that the the coefficient in front of the quartic term, say b, as a coupling constant diverges. So any perturbation theory will fail if the coupling constant that you want to expand actually is over, um, is larger than order one. Now within the perturbation theory, all the coupling constant that you expand about is actually the small value. At least this coupling should be smaller than one. But we will see later that after this dimensional analysis that this coupling constant of this so-called interacting term, which is a small perturbation to this Gaussian theory, then this coupling constant uh, will diverge when dimension is less than four. Okay, so we will show that. But in any case, the dimensional analysis is a very useful tool for any theory in condensed matter, especially we will see that anomalous dimension, which we already discussed, that the Green's function has this extra exponent in the spatial correlation function, eta, that eta is non-zero. Okay, but our naive Gaussian theory will lead to this magnitude of eta, which is not accurate results. So in this chapter, we will see how this eta anomalous exponent or anomalous dimension emerges when we perform this dimensional analysis. So first of all, let's just reformulate this Landau 5-4 theory in terms of a dimensionless quantity where we simply just rescale the phi tutor field to actually normalize and get rid of this gamma a t and this coefficient b, and also this beta one over k b t. So we get rid of those unwanted parameters, but we do not really get rid of them. We just rescale, uh, redefine our fields by delta to actually absorb such uh, messy factors, and then we can rewrite our effective. Hamiltonian or effective, say, uh, Landau's 5 4 theory in terms of five field, a newly defined five field where the beta disappears, but it's not uh, absent, but it's absorbed by redefinition of this phi field. And this is a standard form of a Landau theory, or often called field theory, or 5 4 theory. Okay, so we have this Gaussian. Uh, fluctuation term, gradient phi square, and we have this so-called mass term, uh, phi square, and we have the quartic term. Okay, so we don't 
consider the external field at this point. By a redefinition of this prefactor and psi field, we are able to clean up our notations. And so we could have such a standard form in 5-4 theory. So remember that when we calculate this partition function, this partition function is nothing but a dimensionless, say, quantity, which is nothing but a scalar without any dimensions. So it has the meaning of the probability distribution, so on and so forth. So in other words, this edge effective is actually a dimensionless quantity. And so each of term in this edge effective is actually dimensionless. So, so we need to compute dimensions of all those different variables, such as phi, risk of phi field, or this R0 prefactor in front of the mass term, and also uh, this quartic uh, coupling U0. So this is the first step. We need to compute the dimensions of those quantities. And then we do rescale uh, by enlarging our lattice constant or a length scale to a factor. And then we study how this uh, coupling constant or fields will be rescaled after the rescaling of this units of length. So this is the starting point of renormalization group analysis that we will discuss later. So it's kind of a warm-up exercise for this RG analysis. So as you know, when this quantity has no dimensions, has zero dimension, uh, this must be a constant, independent of any units, any dimensions. So use kind of a bracket denotes the dimension of this quantity inside the bracket. If this is 1, which means that this is L to the power of 0, where L is my lamp scale. So if I rescale my lamp scale, and this quantity doesn't change, so which means that this is just a fixed constant. So now I do rescaling for this term by the following transformations. So I would like to rescale my real space vector R by a factor of L. and then. I check if this quantity inside the bracket is actually scale invariant quantity. It doesn't depend on my, the change of my units in land scale. Then this phi should actually transformed by this formula that this will take a dimension of d phi, which means that this, you know, under such a transformation, this phi goes like phi as function of uh, this rescaled vector r tilde multiply by the length scale to the power of d phi, where d phi is the dimension of the field phi. So in other words, we demand that this quantity is scale invariant under such a transformation of the length scale. If this is the case, then you know r is dimension 4, right? Because r has a dimension of the length. And gradient is actually carrying a dimension, because this is d by dr. So when r transforms like this gradient will also be changed accordingly, but this is a square. So which means that uh, depending on the dimensionality, and we demand that this quantity is a scale invariant, which means that under such a transformation, the whole thing, the integral over gradient square of phi is a scale invariant quantity, which means that phi must carry dimensions. Okay, otherwise, this would not be possible that this term is a scale invariant constant. Okay, so phi should carry so-called scaling dimensions, which we call this d phi under such a transformation of the length scale. Then you simply just plug in this transformation and assumption that phi carries scaling dimension of the L to the power of d phi. And on the right-hand side, this is a scale invariant. So this is L to the power of 0. So then you compare exponents of this power over L on both sides, and you concluded that d phi is nothing but 1 minus d over 2. So this is a scaling dimension of the phi field, okay, which means that under such a transformation, the phi should transform like this. It should take this product of this phi in the new rescaled vector r tilde multiplied by l to the power of 1 minus d over 2. So we could follow the same procedure to find the scaling dimension of the other quantities, such as r0, so you make this quantity a zero dimension, and you could easily show that this R0 has a dimension of L to the minus 2. And likewise, U0 takes this 
scaling dimension of a d minus 4. So you could sort of rescale your phi field and r0 and u0 in terms of a dimensionless quantity, which I call this phi tuta r0 tuta and u0 tuta. So these tuta variables are dimensionless variables because you divide this dimension 4 quantity by their dimensions. So in other words, this is the dimensionless field, and this is also dimensionless landscape, and this is dimensionless quartic couplings. Okay, so you could simply just uh, move all the dimension 4 quantity to the prefactor and just rewrite the ginzburg landau phi 4 theory in terms of this dimensionless variables or couplings. And then we should study how this dimensionless variables transformed under this kind of a rescaling of your land scale. So we are able to rewrite this effective Hamiltonian in terms of the dimensionless variables, um, which I call this R tuta, phi tuta, and U0 tuta, and so on. And in particular, within the Gaussian approximation, this R0 is actually proportional 1 over this correlation length square. As a result, this correlation length is a land scale, which is proportional to this L land scale, which is proportional to R0 to the minus 1 half. So within this Gaussian approximation, sometimes we can interchange between R0 to the power of minus 1 half and the land scale L. So this is what we'll do uh, in just a moment. So suppose that the zeroth order of this theory is this Gaussian theory without this quartic term, and we consider this quartic term as the interactions. And we can actually do perturbation theory, but before we do that, let's just check this dimensionless quantity, this u0 tuta or u0 bar, which is uh, given by this u0 times land scale to the power of 4 minus d. And you could interchange this land scale L with the correlation length uh, C, and you could simply rewrite this in terms of constant prefactor u0 times this little t, which is the distance to the critical temperature which is again a dimensionless quantity, to the power of d minus 4 divided by 2. Uh, in other words, for a fixed physical parameter u0, and you could actually see how this dimensionless variable u0 bar is changed as a function of this distance to the critical temperature, little t. And we see that this is how this u0 bar is varied as you close to this critical point whereas the little t goes to zero. So you can very clearly see that if d is less than 4, this power exponent is actually negative, which means that this t goes to zero, and this quantity diverges when dimension is less than 4. And this is precisely what I meant earlier, that the perturbation theory fails, because this is what we do when we try to consider this quartic term as the interactions between this mean field variables in a quartic term. So we could actually decouple this effective Hamiltonian in terms of the H0, which is the Gaussian term, and the quartic term, which we call this H int. So suppose H int is actually a small perturbation, and this U0 bar starts at very small value, and we can do perturbation. And the way that we do perturbation is simply just we perturb, we tail expand this H int term in this partition function, and we expand is e to the minus h int in power series of h int. And we keep up to, say, lowest order in this perturbation. Say we keep up to only the linear in h int. And but this partition function that we perturb about is actually dependent on this dimensionless parameter u0 bar, where we have used that kind of a change of variables over there. But what is the behavior u0 bar as the temperature approaches Tc? Well, it follows that transformation we just had, and you can immediately see that as little t goes zero and dimension is less than four, this coupling constant that you want to perturb about around diverges. Okay, so which makes this perturbation theory failed because it does not make sense to perturb a term that is already large enough. So if this is much larger than one, 
This, this is not what we call the small perturbation. It's a large, huge perturbation, huge fluctuation. So it is qualified to be called as a small perturbation only if this small coupling constant is really small. But as we just saw over there, that this small dimensionless quantity approaches infinity when dimension is less than 4 as little t goes to 0 or t goes to tc. So in other words, as we close and closer to this critical temperature, or if we are inside this critical region, the perturbation theory also fails. And this is precisely the condition that we found earlier, so-called the Ginsburg criterion, that kind of an arrow bar is actually really large within this range of this critical region. But today, we actually understand this criterion in a different context, in the context of a perturbation theory, in the same for the same reason that uh, this uh, arrow bar diverges, and if we use perturbation, and this U0 bar also diverges, which means that we can do nothing about this to improve this Gaussian theory. So this looks miserable, but it's not a, really a bad news, but it just indicates that we need to find something else to actually address this issue. But if the dimension is above 4, then everything is fine. So the Gaussian theory is OK. So, so you can see that when we are in, inside the critical regime and the perturbation theory fails, which means that this, this coupling constant, dimensionless coupling constant, should be greater or equal to the order of 1. And if we write down such a condition and we rearrange this inequality, and this inequality is the same as Ginsburg criterion that we found earlier. And this is just a consistency check. and you know, a message to us that the inside the critical region, something needs to be done. But next time, we will you know, a study along this line that this bidimensional analysis, we are able to find out in general that the correlation function may carry an extra dimension, which we call this anomalous exponent, eta, under such a rescaling of your land scale. And that's the power of this uh, dimensional analysis. So within the Gaussian theory, there's no such extra exponent called eta present, but in principle, it should be there. But in reality, for two-dimensional icing model, this eta takes the finite value about a quarter. But within the Gaussian theory, eta is zero. But that extra dimension that appears in the Green's function could be studied, addressed, within this dimensional analysis. So this will be our next job to do. I think this uh, is clear that uh, we understand uh, what is going on, okay? what goes wrong within the Landau's or Gaussian approximation. But uh, it's not clear at this point what we need to do. Okay? The perturbation theory fails, so what else can we do? So the answer is we should do the so-called the renormalization group studied on this Phi 4 theory, and so that's our final section of this course, which is, again, very important concept regarding this phase transition. So we come all the way to almost close to the critical temperature, and we encounter such a trouble. But we will overcome such a problem at later part of this course. So that's about everything today, and I'll see you next Monday. Mm -hmm.